Yeah. 
Namaskaram. Namaskaram to all of you. Well, uh, Well, the number of deaths due to the virus is increasing, particularly in certain countries. United States has crossed fifty thousand. Italy has crossed twenty-five thousand. Spain, France, over twenty thousand. UK, just about close to twenty thousand. Nearly two hundred thousand deaths in the world. And over three million cases. India, twenty-three cases, seven hundred and eighteen deaths, thirty-seven in the last twenty-four hours. But fortunately, in India, it is geographically contained. Certain cities are a bit out of control, like Mumbai. But large parts of the country is completely free from it. Thanks to a stringent lockdown that the nation went for, which is paying results at the same time, it can also take a different kind of toll. Collateral damage is happening, which is hard to keep note of. Almost uh, two or three weeks ago, I said this is something we need to take care of, but now the chorus is building up about that. That is, various other uh, ailments with which people were suffering. There are people who need dialysis, there are people who need chemo treatment, which cannot be postponed. And uh, for cancer, for cardiac ailments, for various surgeries, renal problems, <clears throat> all these people are not getting the necessary attention that they must get, unfortunately, because everything is focused towards the virus right now. So it is taking a certain amount of collateral damage. We ourselves here at the yoga center have paid a price today. A very iconic life that lived here with us, Bhairava, the wonderful bull who, be, who was with us for many years now, today passed away. Not with any big ailment, a few days ago he had a small fracture in his ankle and uh, because uh, there was no uh, surgery to be done, no veterinary hospitals open or were doctors willing to visit, this uh, complicated itself into some kind of a... Mm, something it developed into something else altogether. And he passed away today morning. I think the images of Bhairava are there on the screen for everybody to see. He was a grand life. He was with us and... Well, this is happening all over the world to people, to animals, to everybody but everybody's focus is on the virus as it should be, not that we're complaining about it. But these collateral damages can go on increasing as for weeks on end, hospital outpatients are not open. Small things can become fatal things for a whole lot of people. Small things with a little treatment, they would be out of it. Those kind of things can get very complicated now. And if it is not... if one has not contracted the virus, there is some other problem. People are hesitating to go to the hospital because it could be a point of infection for them. People are very conscious and fearful about that. So, uh, it is taking on many dimensions, but at the same time, in many ways in India, we are seeing that slowly we are getting on top of the game, most parts of the country. 
There are a few hotspots, right now the work is largely to separate them so that these hotspots hot will stay that way, rest of the country can get into normal process of activity. That's what right now the plan is and they're looking how to do this effectively. If you do not know this, uh, I think the next four days uh, a curfew has been declared in uh, uh, Coimbatore City, Salem, I think Tirupur is included and Ch Chennai, about four or five cities in Tamil Nadu. It's not a lockdown, it's a curfew, that means you cannot come out. It's not you're being requested not to come, you just cannot come out. Curfew generally means it's not that they're going to do that. Generally curfew means uh, the forces can shoot the violators of the curfew. Well, they're not enforcing it at that level, but I'm, I mean to say it's that serious. That is the intent, to keep people totally in forcefully for four days. You stock up for four days and don't step out of the house for any reason, because we were thinking of now relaxation, but it's gone into this mode, I think is a very uh, wise thing to do. I'm, uh, I'm grateful that Tamil Nadu state government is taking that kind of stringent action. Though it could be unpopular with certain segments of population, this is the way to go forward. Where there is a little danger of spread, really to clamp it down for a little bit of time. Wherever they're talking about their personal freedoms and moving around, well, people are falling dead all over the place. Of course we are free to die. So, uh, this is very important. Now when partial relaxations happen, how we behave, each one of us will determine not only the course of our lives, but the course of the nation's life and probably the world's life. That's where it is. Uh, there are many, many, many aspects which are unfolding about the virus itself, which is making it far more challenging. But in many ways, India as a nation is is uh, really in a very fantastic way on top of the game. Some loose ends are there which they're trying to tie, but largely we are on top of the thing. If we can maintain that for the next two months at this level, I think we've crossed the biggest problem and uh, we don't have such severe winters out here because wherever there are strong winters, they're expecting a second wave. Uh, they're saying the second wave in United States is certain, and probably in China it will come back, right now that's become their fear that second wave will come and second wave will be stronger than the first one, all this. But in India they are looking at second wave may not happen. So uh, it's looking positive in that sense. But everybody will be cramped if one nation is going in a bad way. The whole world will live in fear because all it takes is a few people to travel here and there. So, this is like a new era, all of us uh, should gear ourselves to be more innovative, to really pull out the best in us right now, to see how we can sail through this situation, because this situation is not a small patch. This situation is a little large pool we have to cross. Namaskaram Sadhguru, this is Siddharth from Pune. I have a burning question. Ooh. Can Guru's grace and utter devotion to Shiva dissolve the karma? I think we've gone through this in the last few days. So let us understand these words that you're using. Guru, one word, grace, another word, devotion, another word, Shiva, another word, four dynamites. 
It doesn't take four to blast you, one will do. Either you have devotion or you got touched by Shiva or by the guru or the grace, one will do, you don't need four. You're not a cat. If you were a cat, we would have shot you with nine bullets. <laughs> Just one will do. The problem is you're hopping from one to another probably, you think it's like playing a piano. Pim pim pom pom is happening every day. One one day, one one thing, it doesn't work like that. One of these things are enough. Will this happen? Will that happen? If I do this, that will happen, this will happen. This is coming from a certain mindset. You're asking me if devotion to Shiva will liberate me. If I say yes, then today you're going to go home and become devout. You think it's possible to do that <laughs> It's a uh, devotion happens. Not as a practice, when you clearly recognize, not by believing, you clearly recognize by experience, something is larger than yourself, something is way bigger than you, slowly you become a devotee. It becomes natural, not a cultivated devotion. Cultivated devotion is a... Uh, you know, it, you're acting it up. I have always been trying to remind people, there are mostly, I'm saying, most of the people within the yoga center, you can see there is some sense of devotion in every step. But some are... These days I'm coming quietly on an electric machine, but otherwise, you know, I'm driving a diesel car. It is not very quiet. Even if I'm driving right behind them, going, because they hear some car, but they go. Then somebody say, hey, hey, Sadhguru, Sadhguru. <laughs> like this, they jump to the side and this, this, this. This is not going to work in your life, just know this. This is why I said, if you think you're devoted to Sadhguru or to Shiva or whoever else, it doesn't matter. You must see that in everything. You must see everybody here as Sadhguru, you must see man, woman, child, cow, no donkeys in the ashram, otherwise we could have done that also. Everything, when you see it with the same devotion, now you are a devotee. Will this work? Absolutely. Now you are throwing four options in the air and asking me, which shall I shoot Sadhguru? <laughs> see, a man went to an ophthalmologist and after checking up the eyes, the doctor writing a prescription. So the man said, Doctor, once I get my glasses, will I be able to read? The doctor said, absolutely, definitely, you will be able to read. The man said, that's really great, all my life I could never read. Your devotion is like this. <laughs> if I tell you now, <laughs> Guru's grace will make your karma go away, from now on you will walk like this, uh, Guru, 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 Guru. Uh, for a lot of people, God's name, whatever they're uttering, you think all the time people are uttering, whatever their gods are, their names, with absolute devotion, they're uttering it in irritation, anger, hatred, resentment. It's even a war cry, all right? Most of the time, I would say, 
98 to 99 percent of the time, whatever gods people believe in, those gods' names are not uttered in utter devotion. Only one or two percent may be uttering. Rest are all uttering it, it's open sesame for them. You know, it's a mantra to get something, that's how you're asking now. Will this, 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 there are four items in this. Which bullet shall I pick, Sadhguru, to shoot my karma? Well, this is going to be a big karma. <laughs> wanting to... <laughs> wanting to do shoot Shiva or your guru is going to be a big karma. It's not going to be rela re releasing you from karma, it is going to be more entangling. Oh, Sadhguru, you never give a straight and simple answer, you're just complicating everything. Not me, you <laughs> I'm telling you, one bullet in the head will do. You're saying, four bullets, where all shall I shoot? There's no such thing, one will do. <laughs> Anyone. So, how many times will you get rid of your karma in this life? I want you to understand, as you sit here and breathe, and this machine is working and this machine is also working. This itself is karma. As you live, you're dissolving karma and you're picking up new karma, all the time happening. So you coming to this state, I want to get rid of all my karma, I want to get rid of all my karma, this itself is one big karma. You have to come to some sense of abandon. Because you are not going to get rid of your karma again and again and again. It's not going to happen like that. It's like breath. If you inhale, you have to exhale. If you exhale, you have to inhale. Well, this happened. Shankaran Pillai, for the first time, went on a cruise, a large cruise ship. He got into it. First time he is at sea, a little nervous about it. However big the boat is, still you know, even in very big ships, uh, people, many of them puke endlessly. Because anyway it'll wallow a little bit. So he went to the captain and asked, he was a little nervous about the whole thing, because going off into the ocean in a vessel is like a... So he asked the captain or the... the captain of the ship, he said, a ship of this size, how often does it sink? So the captain looked at him and said, this one, only once. You have to sink yourself only once. <laughs> you don't have to go on doing it all the time, there's no such thing. <laughs> if you distance yourself from the karma-making machine, which is just your body and your psychological process, uh, it's over, it's throwing up things, so what? It doesn't stick to you. What karma means is just this, to live here, you have to touch something. Without touching anything, you cannot live. Visually, by hearing, see right now you may not be going bird hunting, but in a way the birds are touching you with their evening concerns, their own stuff. What do you think? They're saying yoga, yoga? <laughs> no, no, their own stuff. Because they have no concern about the virus. They're all looking down and thinking, when did all these idiots become so sensible? <laughs> you know, quietly they sit, they move around very carefully, nobody is zooming here and there. They're all discussing, it's a debate going on there. 
When did all these idiots become this sensible? Will they stay this way or will they bounce back into their nonsense once again? That debate is going on. So you are touched by the birds, whatever you see, in every way, whatever you touch, no life can happen without touching a million things a day. Now suppose we quote you with... Uh, I'm just trying to say a name without mentioning a brand, Anna Bond, that's also a brand. I'm saying that because it's still... I did something and it's still sticking on, it's not going off my hands, Anna Bond. It's a kind of a glue, liquid. A little I try to take, it's all over my hand and the damn thing won't go, it almost feels like it's going to peel off your skin. So suppose you are coated with one of these uh, really super glues from head to toe. In twenty-four hours' time, just see what you will become. Hello? One big mess, because everything will stick to you. This is all karma is. So everything in the world, whatever you touch, it will stick to you. When everything sticks to you, well, initially when something stuck to you, you thought, this is wealth, this is relationship, this is marriage, like this you thought when something got stuck to you. But after some time, when too many things got stuck to you, then you see slowly face became long, you're looking grave. You're looking grave means you are either walking towards the grave or you are inviting the grave to come to you. One of these things are happening as a life. You may not have such a thought, but as a life, you are beginning to practice death, acclimatization is happening. Yes, that's why we say a grave face, means what? You are acclimatizing for death. Why? Because too many things sticking to you, big heap. To carry this heap and walk around, I just want you to just look at it. You, whatever you identified with, everything got stuck. Let's say you went to work, you're very proud about your work and like this. And uh, you sat there, the chair got stuck to you. You touch the table, table got stuck to you. You touch the computer, computer got stuck to you. Just imagine yourself in a day, what happens to you? You will be a mountain in no time. That's what has happened right now. So it's not about, shall we hack the mountain and take away the karma, take away the karma, no. Devotion, grace, Guru, Shiva, all these are solvents, not for karma, for the glue. We are not interested in unloading the karma off you. Just a glue is dissolved, it will fall off. But now you are that kind, when it starts falling off, oh, but this I like, I want it to stick. <laughs> that I want it to go. Okay, glue is back. <laughs> Glue <laughs> is indiscriminate like virus, it doesn't care what, just anything sticks, that's it. So, we have to just dissolve the glue, we don't have to dissolve the karma. If you dissolve the glue, karma will fall off into its place. Next time you go and sit in the office, the chair will go sit back in its place. I want you to imagine you're walking with a chair stuck to you, computers hanging from your fingers, huh? That's all that's happening right now. People are carrying their job on their head, their family on their head, their world on their head, their wealth on their head. It's ugly, but what to do? In the society, certain people, if you're carrying a lot of load, they say, wow, so successful he is, he's got a mountain on his head. For all of you, what we should do is, to make you understand, I have ordered a, a twenty-five kilogram gold nugget. Gold. Hey, don't laugh, it's gold, pure gold. But you must carry it on your head, we'll fix it on your head. Twenty-five kilogram gold nugget. Oh, people will see, what a wealthy man. 
Walk around and see, you'll understand <laughs> what is the problem of all this. <laughs> so, don't go about thinking, what will do this, what will do that? All you have to do is just this. If you know how to simply sit here, like you're just born, with the intelligence of an adult, with an adult body which has its own issues, but you can sit here like you're just born. When I say just born, just, just born, not even eyes open, because even that little guy, the moment he opens his eyes, meh, he will do. He's got his own stuff. When he's just born, like that, like that if you can sit, simply with an adult body, with an adult intelligence, but not stuck to anything, simply. If you can sit here, that's it. This is what they were holding me to. Sadhguru, you said if you can simply sit with me for a moment, I will liberate you, but now you're going back on your word. You know, three days ago they brought it up <laughs> I said, if you can simply sit with me, you're forgetting simply. <laughs> we sat here <laughs> Yes, you sat here, so what <laughs> So, uh, to do things a uh, little more, alert, little more alert, or little absolute abandon. Alertness means you can come incrementally to it. If it's a question of awareness, you can incrementally grow into it. Not that you're becoming more aware, it's not right, you're becoming more alert. Alert enough that you will notice one day, that awareness is the nature of your existence. Another way is to come to absolute abandon because you spoke about... <laughs> you spoke about devotion, Shiva, Tch, this is about total abandon. This you cannot do incrementally. This is a one-time jump. If you have to jump into something in such a way, you must be either crazy or absolutely fearless, because there are no such people absolutely fearless, you must be crazy. Otherwise, you will not come out clean. Because <laughs> even to, you know, people in the ashram, there is not so much of a problem. Men can shave uh, once in five days, six days or once in a month, you know, different people at different stages. I'm little liberated, but uh, <laughs> if you want a clean shave, even that, you have to do many things. This happened in Tennessee. A man uh, went to the barber and said, uh, you know, I got a new job and it's very important that I have a really clean shave. That's why I'm here. The barber said, no problem, and he gave him a golf ball and he said, hold it in your mouth, one cheek here, hold it this way, I will shave this way totally clean and then this way totally clean. So, you know, that, that posture in a barber's... Uh, barber shop uh, chair, holding the ball like this, he got himself shaved, it came out really clean. Then he said, for a moment I thought I almost swallowed the ball. Suppose I swallow the ball, what happens? And the barber said, no issue, like everybody else, bring it back after two days. <laughs> this is karma <laughs> keeps rotating. <laughs> You're recycling the same nonsense, how long will you do it? <laughs> One golf ball is enough to shave hundred people. <laughs> So, this is happening not because of the activity, not because of the people, not because of the world, not because of the virus. This is happening because you're coated with glue. So, the four solvents you mentioned, any one of them is fine. Dip yourself absolutely, either in devotion or in grace 
or in Guru or in Shiva, just dip yourself absolutely in any one of them, uh, solvent will go away. After that, what is karma? There's no such thing. Oh, some more time, please. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> Next question is from Ekta Agarwal. Please guide the women of the country who are dealing with lazy partners, <laughs> stubborn parents, bored children, on how to coexist compassionately amidst all the chaos when household workload has increased and our work front identity has disappeared. You are a very fortunate woman. You have a lazy partner. An overactive man, twenty-four hours in the house, he is a bull in the china shop, he is lazy. You are very fortunate because he either sleeps or watch television, something like that. If he was overactive, a whole lot of trouble. No, your idea of being a more active partner is that he will come into the kitchen and wash dishes and sweep the floor and... Mm, there are some very nice men like that, but most men are not like that. I am not saying <laughs> washing dishes is a woman's job, cleaning the house is a woman's job, no. But man doesn't mind living dirty <laughs> A woman wants things clean, so she has to clean it. <laughs> Otherwise, you just go into a bachelor's den and see everything is everywhere. They will go, they'll shower and come, they'll start go picking, where is my underwear, where is my clothing, you know. Here uh, at the yoga center, we are training the men to be little more hmm, disciplined. Otherwise, it is uh, in the mindset of a man that, you know, it's taken... I, I've seen in the last forty years, uh, I've been constantly trying to get people to park their footwear together. Because it's a male disposition to come and kick the footwear, one here, one there. <laughs> now we've, uh, l you know, we've awakened the feminine in all the men here at least, and in all our programs, that they all park their footwear properly. Tch. Usually, they will kick it out and because the woman cannot bear it, she will come and put it together somewhere. So, because this happened, once Shankaran Pillai, now, not once, now, in the virus era, because this will be remembered as a era. <laughs> in this virus times, Shankaran Pillai went and parked his car in the emergency entrance of a hospital, where the emergency lane. Uh, then the police came and pulled him up and uh, said, what is this? He said, well, it was marked there, uh, fine for parking. <laughs> so that is how he understands. <laughs> fine for parking means fine for parking. <laughs> So, uh, what, what are the children's qualities? Stubborn parents and bored children. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stubborn parents, bored children. Well, this is the family we have bred, isn't it? And uh, you're losing your professional identity. That's a good thing actually for some time unless you're working from home. This is important to understand. 
that this is the best time if you want to transform your family, whatever they are, they are stubborn, they are bored, they are lazy, they are overactive, they are nonsensical, whatever they are, different people are different things. But now you have them captive in your home. If you want to transform them, this is the best time. Because once they go out, they are not available. So whichever way you wish to transform them, if you want to try, there is no better time than the virus era because they are all stuck in the house, they have to. If you say ten things, at least two things they must do, they can't just ignore it. However stubborn or lazy they are or however bored they are, if you say ten things, at least two things they got to do because otherwise, Nourishment is in your hands, from what I understand. <laughs> from the way you're describing, obviously they are not... none of them are cooking. You are the one, so nourishment is in your hands. So very easily you can. All you have to do is dinner time. Maybe today it's too late, you already cooked. Tomorrow, breakfast time, ask everybody to whatever time, you know, they will... that one thing they'll demand, they will not be lazy about it. So breakfast time, everybody arrives, you also sit down, if necessary, uh, say Asatoma, Sadgamaya or sing a song if you want, if you know how to sing, but no breakfast. <laughs> well, we're all happy and together, what does it matter? Breakfast or no breakfast, what does it matter? You give them a talk, how it doesn't matter after all. We are all together, family is about being together, not about washing dishes, cleaning the house, this is not what family is about. Family is about being together and blowing kisses at each other. <laughs> then they will all understand, family means you have to wash your dishes, you have to clean the floor, you have to take the cobwebs out, you have to go put the garbage out. This is what arrangement of family means. In all this, with garbage bag in your hand, if you can also blow a kiss, you're doing great. But if you cannot, just do that because that is the first aspect of the family. It's an organization. It's an organization where people have to eat, people have to live, People have to live there, that means a few things have to be done first. After that, how loving and wonderful you are is after that, you better get that. So, tomorrow morning if you invite them to the breakfast and give them a nice sloka or a song or whatever you know, and tell them how we are the most fantastic family, let's live together really lovingly holding hands, doesn't matter what is breakfast. Petty things like that is not our concern <laughs> Well, uh, lazy people will get fixed, stubborn people will get fixed, bored people will get interested, <laughs> everything will happen <laughs> Don't think family means uh, a big love affair, no. It's a lot of management. You can manage lovingly, that's a different matter. But lots of management, otherwise no relationships will endure without sensible management of situations, very important. Yoga, Yoga, Yogeshwaraya Bhuta 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 Shwaraya Kala 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 Shwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya 
शंभ शंभ महादेव